Shit. Welcome to episode 31 of the O the Anthem podcast. This week we talk about Corey's run-in with a certain Maryland congressman, but we're not going to tell you who it is. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about the elections, not too much, just some of the change that we saw here in Maryland and some of the things we think still need to be addressed nationally. Uh, and finally, a different kind of change. Taylor Swift has the first platinum album of 2014. We talk about her and all of Corey's mixed feelings about that and the fact that she put all her albums off Spotify. So all that and more coming up right now on the O the Anthem podcast. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Enjoy, everybody. Well, fuck you then, too. We're off Spotify. This is the Other Anthem Podcast. Isn't this Corey? Good afternoon, everybody. This is Rob. I don't know if anybody was actually looking for us on Spotify. Are we on Spotify? No. Okay, I didn't think so. Isn't that just music? Yeah, I don't Basically think they. Music. I don't think they do podcasts. We could break the podcast into four minute chunks and then put and it up there release like an, an album. album? Yeah. yeah, every week a new album. Yeah, that'd be good. Sure, why not? Or we could just make like uh, Pink Floyd, who's coming out with their last album on Tuesday. Right, like a twenty five like, minute. Yeah, like have nice little twenty five minute chunk tracks. Mm-hmm. That'd be nice. Right. Uh, hello everybody, welcome to yet another O The Anthem podcast. I had something very interesting happen to me this week. Yeah, no, I want to jump right into that, because it, it wasn't this week, it was today. Today. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Um, as of time of this recording, which is Saturday. Oh yeah, right. Well, um, so if I'm arrested on Tuesday, then <laughs> now we know y'all why. know why. <laughs> um, I was dropping my sister off at her apartment. At an uh, undisclosed location. An undisclosed location somewhere in District 7. Of the congressional map. Okay, of Baltimore. Of, of Maryland. Maryland. Baltimore. Yeah. It's in downtown. Uh, I don't know why I had to specify, but whatever. Because District 7 made me think of District 9, yeah. I think. And I'm like, this is not a fictional place where aliens are <laughs> no. concentrated. Or Area 51. Area 51. No, no, this is a real place. Yeah, District this is a 7. real place. You can look at it on map and everything. I know, right. Um, the one of those gerrymandered maps. I yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so I was, I dropped off my sister, and then I decided that I was going to go home, which is usually what I do afterwards. Right. Come sure. here to record the podcast and that right. sort of thing. Uh, there is a complete and utter asshole in front of me, driving hideously slow. Mm-hmm. Now, how slow is hideously slow? I I made the point to you earlier that it, I could walk backwards faster. Mm-hmm. I think I could have gotten on my hands and knees and crawled faster. Right. Than this guy, and crawled faster on like pavement with like heroin needles on it and shit like that. <laughs> now, justifiably, I mean, like, are you in a parking lot? Like, what's the so so? Here's the here's how it works. There's a uh, there's two major roads mm-hmm. that are you know a hundred yards in each direction. Right. And we're leaving a parking garage and entering, like, the small little side street that connects these two major right. roads. So there's, it's maybe there's 100 a gate, yards. There's a gate at the parking lot. Too. Park, uh, Yeah, right. gate at the parking lot. So I leave, and the slow SUV is in the driveway of the parking garage. Right. Heading towards that side street. And he is going hideously slow, and then he stops. And he stops for, I'm serious, a good 45 seconds. Right. At about the 30-second mark, I say to myself, all right, this guy's just going to get blasted to space with my horn. I'm about to get out the car. I'm about to get out of the car and yell at this man. Right, yeah. Like, fucking make up your mind already. So what is it that made you stop then? Uh, I saw a license plate that said uh, U.S. House of Representatives. <laughs> oh, wow. So I decided, uh, yeah, I'll give this guy a couple, couple more seconds to make up his mind. Okay. But if we hit a minute, too long. That's, that's way too long, no matter who you are. I don't right. give a shit. Your mother Teresa, I'm going to fucking blast you with the horn. Well, like I said, he could have mount- tasted the horn. He could have mounted the curb and driven the curb all the way downtown, and nobody's going to stop him. Right. So there's no excuse. Because he's a well esteemed member of Congress. Right. Which member? Are we? No, we're not. No, we're not. No. Okay, I, okay for the sake of argument, uh, just so the story is a little bit easier to get through, yeah. I'm going to make up a name. Okay. Uh, let's call him Elijah Davis. Okay. No, that's not a good one. Let's call him uh, Clay Cummings. Okay. All right, so Clay Cummings is at the end of this parking garage, like the driveway area. (laughs) And no blinkers, no anything. I'm Mm -hmm. sitting behind him. I'm ready to make a right. He makes a right. Of course. So, obviously, the slow driver remains in front of you. Mm -hmm. And I am behind him. And for the last 50 yards that I have before I can make it to 
the major road, the two lane road where I can get around him easily. Right. He was driving so slow. I, I have a manual. Right. The Subaru is a manual. He was driving so slow that I had to step on the clutch three or four times to keep the car from stalling out. Mm -hmm. He then stopped in the middle of this small road and there's cars coming the other way. And I say, I can't do it. I can't just sit here anymore. Right. So I quickly make a maneuver around him. An illegal maneuver. You pass on a double line, (laughs) but it's Baltimore downtown. So... (laughs) You didn't who, are, who are we to say what's legal and illegal? If I remember, there's no lines on that road anyway. I, I didn't see them. Okay, sorry. so yes, <laughs> isn't that uh, isn't ignorance an excuse of the law? Absolutely not. But yeah, let's. <laughs> <laughs> if not, everybody I ever represent would be innocent. Yeah. <laughs> Needless to say, I made a a quick maneuver. I looked at him, right in the face. Mm-hmm. U.S. Representative. Uh, Clay, Clay Cummings, right? Yes. Uh, who I'm, uh, I'm modeling after uh, Clay Davis in The Wire. So be sure to get lots of pictures with, with the, uh, with him going like she. <laughs> um, we have that in the podcast <laughs> usuals because <laughs> I use that a lot. <laughs> so I looked at him. I put both arms up next to my, like you know, parallel to my shoulders, and I did the like, like what the fuck, man? <laughs> right. What the fuck? I don't care who you are. It's too long. And then as I got back into the lane, after I made the passing maneuver, there was a guy who was parked and decided to make an illegal U-turn in the opposite lane as I was approaching. So I got towards him and slammed on the brakes. And then he looked at me like, what the fuck are you doing? And I was just like, blame that guy. So you <laughs> so are you back in your lane at this point? I'm back in my lane. Okay, so you go around and back in the lane, slam on the brakes. Guy does a yeah. U-turn in front of you. Perfect. Right. So I... uh. Everybody's safe. Nobody was harmed during this time. But it's very clear to me that there was almost a U.S. A member of the U.S. House of Representatives was almost responsible mm-hmm. for the a, deaths of ups, three an upstanding citizen mm-hmm. to die at the hands of a car that had lost control. <laughs> now, which one of these are you? By his... I'm the respectable citizen. Okay. <laughs> the taxpayer. Right. Church going man. Are you? Local deacon. Mm. All right. So maybe none of that is true. But <laughs> Well, the taxpayer the, part is true. The taxpayer part. Oh, believe me, the taxpayer part is true. <laughs> right. I paid for that car that right. he's driving improperly. Right. Again, uh, uh, since I just said deacon, you mind if I preach on it a little bit? Mm. Hit it. Go ahead. Take the pulpit. Uh, I think. Mm-hmm-hmm. I think that every single person who's elected to Congress, Senate, governor, whatever the case may be, any kind of elected official for your state should have to have the same values of the people who live in the state. Okay. So I I don't want to hear, I don't want to go, I don't want to click through CNN and all of a sudden see Barbara McCausick going like, fuck Maryland blue crabs. Okay. They're terrible. I hate them. Everybody who eats them is stupid. That would be suicide, I think. But She could get away with it. I don't know about that. If anybody could get away with it, it's Babs Mikulski. (laughs) Who calls her Babs? I call her Babs. Hmm, Okay. Me and her. We're good personal friends. Sure. Me and Babs. Sure, okay. Hanging out at the hippo. Right. Um, I don't see her ever (laughs) going to the hippo. No, I don't either. (laughs) Um, Needless to say... I would say that Maryland drivers, on the whole, are uh, very aggressive and uh, quick drivers. Right, yeah. How often do you get upset when somebody is driving the speed limit? Right, but my argument is going to be, are all those drivers in their late hundreds, like the person that you are discussing? Elijah Cummings? I mean, Clay Davis? <laughs> yes, Clay Davis. Yeah, Clay Davis uh, is in his late hundreds. It's. I think he might be approaching 100. Let's not be too mean. <laughs> okay. I'm, but, looking, I'm looking at a picture of the congressman now. He looks to be... Well, it's hard. It's hard because you... With, you know, I, I'm going to just use the stereotype here. Black man could be 40, could be 75. Who knows? Black don't crack. He, <laughs> are you using that correctly? <laughs> is that... Is that <laughs> no, I watched the episode of Last Man Standing today yeah. in which she refers to... Um, uh, drug use 
and she's and he like as if they're surprised that the young man who's in the school was using drugs. Right. And the mom's just like, I thought black don't crack. <laughs> and uh, Tim Allen's like, I think you're using that incorrectly. <laughs> Anywho, so. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I feel like if you're going to be in the U.S. House of Representatives for the state of Maryland, District 7, then uh, you should drive like everybody who lives in your district drives, which is no respect for the people around you, uh, reckless abandon, constantly twice the speed limit. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you are, in fact, driving a car, then uh, it probably... Uh, I don't want to well, If you're a congressman, can't you afford to have somebody drive you around to avoid that? Like somebody who actually knows how to use a gas pedal? Right, yeah, well, somebody who, you know, didn't have to crank the first car that they owned, basically. Yeah, you know. yeah I guess that that's, that's, the struggle is real if you're a member of the U.S. House of Representatives. And where's the security? I feel like he has security. Maybe he was lying in the back seat. <laughs> had to take a load off. No, I mean, like, he, maybe he was, uh, like, you know, like, uh, uh, do, have you seen the, the trailer for American Sniper, the new Bradley Cooper, Ridley Scott? I think it's Ridley Scott movie. No. It's just a scene where Bradley Cooper is a sniper on, like, a building, and mm -hmm. he's, like, lying on his bag. Right. And he's got the gun, like, through the... Like, he's just lying down on his chest. As they do, yeah. As they do. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would like to imagine that, that in the back of Elijah Cummings, I mean, Clay Davis's car, they had uh, one of his Secret Service people just, like, lining up. Like, you? I got him. I got him in sight. <laughs> That oh the anthem guy who hasn't said a word about you. Just wait for him to honk. Just wait for him to honk. Oh man, he's gonna get it. <laughs> we can. <laughs> Don't worry, Elijah. I mean Clay. We can make up any story. Right. Well, you're a U.S. congressman. <laughs> Who's going to deny it? <laughs> we can round up ten witnesses in this neighborhood. <laughs> so anyway, Clay Davis is an asshole. Right. And uh, speaking of elected officials, uh, despite the fact that we didn't address it at all, there was an election. Yeah, on the day that the uh, podcast came out, so there's that. You know what? I don't think it was that much of a missed opportunity because well, yeah. I didn't expect much of what happened that night. See, I did. I, I had faith. I knew. I, I had a, a sneaking suspicion that was going to happen. I had a sneaking suspicion that Larry Hogan was going to win the governor's race. Yep, here in Maryland. Yep, which was a shocker to many. Seen as uh, Democrats outnumber Republicans two to one in this state. Yeah, but you got to come vote. <laughs> That's how that well, happens, yeah, but you know. Also, I think Democrats on a whole really don't like Anthony Brown. I think that was the uh, overarching image of the election was that uh, we don't like Anthony Brown. Well, there, we don't like O'Malley, and we also don't like Anthony Brown. There Anthony. was a, there was a tweet that I saw. I can't. God, I wish I could remember who did it. I should have just retweeted it because it was funny. Uh, but it was. Uh, Somebody who worked for The Sun, I believe, uh, said, honest question, did Anthony Brown knock on one door or speak at one event this entire election? Oh, yeah. I, I saw him during the election. Did you? Yep. Because I honestly, the first time I heard him speak yep. was when Hillary Clinton was in town. Oh, well, that was the only time I heard him say a word. I saw him over the summer, but I get invited to those kind of events. So Maybe. Maybe it's just because I'm I'm uh, not not on the same level. Politically, yeah, I don't know that I'm. They don't want. Either. They don't want my my uh, couch change for their election. They want real money. Well, I've become. They a, want those uh, big, big fat lawyer stacks that you got. Shit. I've become. A, <laughs> that's not <laughs> why. Shit. That's not why I'm on the list. I'm on the list because I was so politically active, and now I've become oh, a gotcha. pariah because um, I have the gall to speak logically about things. Because you say shitty things about Elijah Cummings. I mean, Clay Davis. I be that I because I ad openly advocate for regime change I, online. This is uh, this is one part I don't get. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it's just people are dumb, or it's that people have a super short memory, or maybe it's both. Okay. But I'm kind of shocked that Republicans took so many. Congress, Senate, and governors' ships. Yep. Uh, despite the fact that a good degree of them shut down the federal government on a pretty, pretty dumb move. Right. Well, in retrospect, um, remember that nobody who got elected shut down the government because none of those people were in office. True, but right. So here's how this happens. There's a, there's a, there's a large degree. Uh, there was a large degree of people who said, uh, 
like, oh, I'm not voting for that person who fucking here's here's what happened. So real quick, I live I live in Dutch Rupersburger territory. Right. He's my congressman. Right. Regrettably. Um he has done more to ruin the privacy and safety of Americans than anybody else in sure. Congress. He's the one for the National Defense Authorization Act. Mm-hmm. So the one far? that the no, one that not so far. Uh, no, no, no. He's the one. The National Defense Authorization Act was the one that did pass. Right. That allowed, uh, that made it so that uh, the U.S. government could instruct companies to keep six months worth of records of every single customer that they have. That they could label me a terrorist, black bag me, and send me to Guantanamo. Well, the idea, the, the idea is that uh, they wouldn't do it unless they had a reason to. But guess what? They're doing it for everybody. They're just not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's everybody's a terrorist. So. Well, obviously, so. Um. Yeah. So that guy won in a landslide election. Okay. Not even. Not even close. I think the the person who run, ran against him got like twenty seven percent of the vote or something like that. Yep. Well, here's the thing. Uh, Congress has an an eleven percent uh, approval rating. Yeah. And ninety eight or no ninety three percent of the people went back. Yeah. So if that makes any fucking sense in the world. Right. We hate you so much that you only have an 11% rating, but it's not my guy that's the problem. The, I thought I saw a graphic somewhere that said the approval rating of Nickelback was higher than Congress. Yeah. 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 So, but here's what happened. Um, Republicans who were responsible for the fiscal shutdown were beat in their primaries by more conservative candidates. And when I say more conservative, what I mean is crazy fucking Tea Party candidates. Right. Now, I want to make clear that I would consider myself a Tea Partier. I well, that's not true. I would have cr- considered. <laughs> I should clarify. I would have considered back myself when back when it was a movement that in, in, in 2010, strictly involved eighty year olds. In twenty ten, I considered myself a Tea Partier because I like the idea of limited government, um, limited in a way that makes sense, yeah. uh, fiscal conservancy, getting back to the ideals. And then the Koch brothers decided they wanted to buy themselves a political party. And they, between 2010 and 2012, bought the Tea Party movement. Yep. And uh, now it's nothing like that. So I'm not a Tea Partier now. But the Tea Party now actually has a chance of winning because we saw that. They, right. they beat the Republicans who shut down the government and then it used that Obama fury to get rid of the Democrats who had the seats. I, I honest to God, I'm always telling people to vote. Mm-hmm. I'm always. Uh, it's, who you vote it's for, worth, go vote. Yeah, go vote. I honestly couldn't. Uh, Congress, I couldn't do it. Couldn't I couldn't. Uh, the people who were on the ballot for yeah. Congress was A, Dutch Ruppersberger, which is not going to happen in my lifetime. Right. Uh, and I, I remember, like, looking around for, like, the, the policies of the other people running. One person had, like, a fucking GeoCities webpage. <laughs> yeah, no. So I, I said, I clearly, it. if you don't understand that we're living in 2014, you are not allowed to... Be a member of Congress. We have enough people who live in the Stone Ages that we don't need another one coming in. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, with like the GIF American flags. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, the whole thing. It, awesome. it might as well have just started playing like Glory, Glory, Hallelujah <laughs> when you clicked on the page. Like, just got to go searching for that little tiny music player somewhere on the you page. Find it, yeah. yeah. Turn it off. <laughs> I'm at work, fucker. You can't. Um,. And then the other person was just like, the. I don't know why he thought he was going to win. I don't even know why he wasted his time running. Because he was like the most. Uh, it it might as well have been like, well, let's drag the gays into the streets and stone them to death. Oh, but like, that might those. as well have been a part of his stump speech. Some of those are purposeful, though. And that's what that's what people misunderstand. Is that so. Uh, Having people like that in the race don't help. No, it does. It does. It helps the candidate who closely aligns with them, but isn't so extreme. Because okay, so I want to. I'm, I'm going to use a theory that I I don't think I've talked about before, but that I preach all the time. Uh, if you want regime change in this country, you don't do it by utilizing Occupy movements, right? And you well, that clearly didn't work. Well, and you don't do it by blowing up buildings and having like open revolt, right? You do it by having both. And the reason that you want both is because 
of the way that it shifts the American consciousness. So in this example, we have the crazy person who's saying, drag the people out in the streets and stone them. And then you have the other conservative who is saying, you're not really people, so you don't shouldn't marry. And yeah. compared to the guy who wants to stone them, you're a moderate. Yeah. So the, the, the theory, theory works the same way, is that when you have that extreme person, it makes the other person who's crazy, just not as crazy, seem like middle ground. So you have a blue dog Democrat who is a really a centrist, and people can't see my head gestures. Yeah. But there, you have a centrist Democrat, and then you have a crazy conservative, but you also have a crazier conservative. Yeah. And now if I'm a centrist, I look at that field and I say, well, I always vote for the guy in the middle. Yeah. Because that's, that's how I am. Now, in yeah. reality, the Democrat's the one that's in the middle. Yeah. But you can't see that because the guy who is that, a moderate. But, see, that's the, that's the problem is that we don't have, like, you know, the candidate – if we have a 1 to 10 scale, right. where I'm not using numbers to distinguish value, but rather a spectrum. ends of the spectrum. Yeah. If 1 is a Democrat and 10 is a Republican, and like 1 is like the biggest Democrat you've ever met in your entire life, and 10 is the most diehard Republican you've ever met in your life, yeah. we got 1s and 10s running in the same race, and nobody in the 2 to 9 scale. Or, like this example... Or we have a 1, a 9, and a 10... And the 9 looks like he's in the middle. Yeah, and then we say, like, well, I guess i got to vote for the 9 because... Or sometimes you get the worst-case scenario, which is what happened to Wayne Gilchrist, where you have Craddaville, who's a blue dog, so he's a 5. Yeah. But it it makes the moderate conservative look like the middle. Actually, that doesn't work for, for Gilchrist because he was actually a moderate. But I liked Gilchrist a lot. He was. I think he's the last politician I honestly liked. Yeah. And fucking run again. Wayne, run. I, I started a webpage in 2012 that was run, Wayne, run. Yeah. Because I, yeah, come back. Come back. I, I'll vote for you. Go as an independent. No, no, it oh. wasn't. It was 20, it was, two, was it 2010? Oh, yeah, I think it was 2010. When you lost Andy Harris, who's also a notorious douchebag. Right, because I was saying, just because you lost in the primary, run. Because we Democrats, we centrist Democrats, will vote for you in the, um, See, the in, uh, general. I guess... There's so many. By the way, that's also why when I started. There is not one I... person who ran in this race, at least in the the uh, the actual part of it, right? Like the the final, the general election. Yeah. That I like. Nope. Regardless of party, Heather Majora was my favorite for governor. Oh, she how much? How much do you from. wish the Maryland Democratic Party that wishes that either Gansler or Missouri was running? Yeah. Other than Brown. Well, he because... decided to go become a different person after the primary. He started doing all negative campaigning. And he did nothing. Well, he, he did. We didn't see he him. He sat back. Because well, he's a Democrat in Maryland. He's going to win. And right, so just, but that was his problem. He, he sat threw, back yeah. and he let Hogan... He throws shit at Hogan and expects that throwing shit at him and sitting and not doing anything is going to get you elected. Yeah. But it didn't, obviously. So now we have Mike some like, concern about a, an untested person. But. The, the, people, the people who are representing us are just fucking terrible all around. Yeah. Harris is terrible. Rupersberger is terrible. Anthony Brown was terrible. I don't really give a shit about Hogan one way or the other. So I imagine he's going to get much like Ehrlich did and get the, like, 90% Democratic state Senate yeah. and state representation. That's just not going to allow him to do anything. No. no. Like, he's just going to he's gonna spend four years doing nothing. Well, we're about to do the same thing in the national level, too. So well, yeah. Matter. We're going we're gonna to get two years of nothing getting done. Right. So here's a comment I made on Facebook. I said... This is the best thing that could happen for our country. This Republican takeover, the Republic, and for me being a Marylander, best on all fronts. Democratic uh, House, House of Delegates in the state Senate, Republican governor. And then Republican takeover of both the Senate and the House and a Democratic president. Because people, you need to understand, ain't shit getting done in the next two years. What yep. we're going to get in the next two years is let's find a way to blame the other person for everything so that when we do have to all run again, which they do in two years, and oh, by the way, the president will be running at that time, um, everybody who has to run can blame the other guy for not getting shit done. Have you ever been in the room with a drunk person who just got broken up with? Oh, yeah. Like a drunk girl who just yes. got broken up with? Yeah. And she spends like the entire time that you're standing there going like, he's such an asshole. Do you know he kicks puppies for a living? He literally gets paid for that. Did you know that once he tried to burn a swastika into my back with cigarette butts? He didn't even 
smoke the cigarettes. He just got a bunch of butts and he lit them on fire and he tried to make a swastika in my back. It was terrible. <laughs> I like your like, girl voice. Yeah. But when when you hear that girl speaking, like the first time you hear her, the first thing she says, you're like, oh, yeah, this is my friend. I'm on board. Right. Like, oh, he cheated on you? What a fucking dick. Yeah. And then the second thing she says, you're just like, yeah, he's still a dick. That sounds weird, but okay. That's, that's a, a little bit far. I don't think he kicks puppies for a living. I don't right. think that's a job. And then once she gets into, like, swastika tattoos with cigarette butts, you're just like, something tells me you're taking this a little bit too far. <laughs> something tells me if I was having a beer with this guy right now, he wouldn't be that bad. Right, yeah. That's the... I feel... <sighs> I don't know. No, no, that's that's Congress because yeah. you know that's that's what, feel, that was what Obama. Did. Obama has plenty. Just you know, uh, the the uh, partisan bullshit aside. Yeah, there is plenty of things that Obama has done horribly wrong. Oh yeah, and plenty of things that we should hold him responsible for. Absolutely. Uh, just as we should hold Congress responsible for plenty of things and the Senate po- responsible for plenty of things. Yep. But uh, he is not the guy who get, makes a living out of kicking puppies. Mm-mm. Or making swastika tattoos out of cigarette butts. No, he is he is just a man with horrible flaws. I, well, he's a and, man. Yeah, he's a man with horrible flaws, yeah. and we we uh, shouldn't let the people we shouldn't let the drunk girlfriends of the world, Congress decide. Yeah, don't <laughs> make up our minds for us. You know, here's here's the other thing I'll say because the more you talk, the more you talk about how Obama is a socialist and he's like you know trying to change this country but, uh, into a socialist country. A fascist, the less people listen to you. A fascist and a socialist. Yeah, which idiots? <laughs> they're on the other opposite ends of the spectrum. Right. And uh, he's a Nazi and a yeah. communist, also on opposite sides of the spectrum. Yeah, they I don't hate each other. I don't think. Uh, and he's know, not an American. He, you know, you know that Obama's both a Muslim and a Jew at the same time. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, that's, like, that's <laughs> true. yeah. So, anyway, so here's what I'll tell you about the. Can we stop uh, fooling ourselves into thinking we have two parties? Can we just stop that? Because we don't. No, I mean that's what it comes down to. We have uh, a single party, the money party, and it has two wings. It has a uh, a wing that likes to wear blue ties, but we put red on maps, and it has a wing <laughs> that uh, wears red ties but pl- puts blue on maps yeah. during the election. That's it. Um, there are some differences about them. One of them uh, claims that they love Jesus and does everything opposite of what he would do. Yeah. The other party says Jesus doesn't exist, but acts as if they live the life that he would recommend us doing. I still, I, st- I, I I'm gonna put it in the show notes. Yeah, because everybody should watch it if they haven't already. I like how it, how uh, this particular video like still makes like shows up on people's Facebook timelines. I've seen it like three okay. times this week. The opening scene from the newsroom. Ah, fuck yes, I love that. Where he's just like, yeah. if Democrats are so fucking smart, why do they lose so goddamn always? <laughs> yeah. The NEA, the NEA is great. It only costs us a penny out of the paycheck. How it hurts you is it hurts you in votes. Because yeah. he can keep beating you up about it. And freedom? Really? <laughs> freedom? Oh, by the way, uh, just going back to something we discussed last week. Yeah. I saw a uh, t-shirt at Target today. It was a NASA t-shirt. Mm-hmm. It only cost twelve ninety nine. I was thinking about getting it for you. Okay. But I was going to make a slight alteration first. I was going to cut it in half. Right. So that you wouldn't get your money's worth. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but um. Anyway. So uh, uh, now i got to put Manny <laughs> again. Now Manny's going into the podcast yeah. usuals folder. Let me make it Manny. <laughs> okay. Uh, so here's what I'll say. It is, uh, th- th- this is the best thing that could happen to us for, for many reasons. Number one, um, we need to talk about... Uh, Fun, campaign fi- financing reform because it's fucking ridiculous. Uh, yeah. People are buying elections. And, you know, I, I'm all about. I, I saw an interesting picture on social media this week. It was Jimmy Fallon doing his opening mm-hmm. where he says uh, a guy got, got arrested based on cops using Google Earth to find his pot stash, his pot field. And yeah. like, so, to all of you out there who think that the government's spot using satellites to spy on you, turns out you're right. <laughs> like, yeah. That's it. So, uh, we're not. I know things are going to sound crazy. It's not as crazy as you think. That their money is running everything, and the same ten rich people basically yeah. run both parties. Yeah. Um. They're going to tell it, he meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Now, I'd like to think Hogan is a, a, a different from that because he has been preaching that all along, and he beat the party favorite in the primary. You know. So. You know what I love the argument that Republicans make all the time. No, what's up? It? It's like that. Uh. Well, you know, it's that damn George Soros who's always, like, funding every single Democrat in the country. Right. I'm just like, uh, I don't know if you've taken a look at 
his net worth recently. That, but it ain't nowhere compared to the two brothers in Kansas. Or like, uh, the uh, Walton family, yeah. which also can't donate shit to charity, but donates a lot to political campaigns. Yeah. It's weird how that works. Anyway, so it, it's all one party. It, new bosses Well, charity doesn't give them cheap labor. Well, so. And it also doesn't give them tax breaks. And The only thing that's going to get done in the next two years is that we're going to see taxes get rolled back on the top 10%. Yep. Yeah. Um, they're going to try and roll back uh, Social Security and uh, Obamacare and a bunch of stuff, but he's going to veto those things. The only reason they're going to get the tax breaks in is because the budget, because they're just going to put it in the budget and not fund some shit. And right. he's going to say, well, we're going to still fund it, and they're going to say, well, we're not going to get the taxes from them, and then the deficits that have been constantly shrinking, shrinking by the way, over the last six years will then expand again because yeah. we're not going to cut programs, but we are going to cut income. And... Um, so nothing's going to get done, and people are going to be worse in two years than they are now. And because of the problem that was aptly pointed out in 1996 in, or 1997 in the book What's the Matter with Kansas, which everybody should read, uh, most likely elections will be a wild card in two years rather than being very clear. Um, but on the plus side. You know what I think would be good for elections? Uh, yeah, what's that? Not putting political affiliations with hmm. candidates. Make them guess based on the name. Yeah. Absolutely. Just put a bunch of names on the ballot. Yep. We had, uh, in Queen Anne's County, uh, one of the com uh, county commissioners got elected and defeated a d Democrat that everybody loved. And anybody who complains, anybody yeah. who, like, goes to the ballot... Not allowed to vote. Yeah, if they go, like, excuse me, who's the Democrats and who's the Republicans? Oh, I'm sorry, you've lost your rights, sir. <laughs> yeah, step away. Uh, <laughs> I, know you're not, I know you're not black and poor, but we're not going to let you vote. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. man. Well, you know, 11 million people were disenfranchised, by the way, on Election Day. So, sorry about that. You um, know, I've, I've honestly, I've been voting, let's see here, how many elections has it been? 2000 would have been, no, 2002 was our first election. Yeah. So, it's been two years ever since then? Yeah, 12 years, uh, three presidentials, six congressionals, and yeah. we've elected two senators in those 12 years. Yeah, so six elections, though. Yeah. Uh, every single time I've walked in... They've never. They've just asked me for my name, and I've given it to them, yep. and walked right into the voting. Well, area. we don't have a voter ID law. So. Oh, I know, but I'm saying like, I, I, the, the only reason why I, I think that it, it's not necessarily a good idea or a bad idea. I think people should have ideas. Yeah. But I don't think they necessarily need one to vote. Though I have thought many, many a time that I could just walk in and give my, give a common name, just right. be like Steve Jones. Right. And they'll be like, right this way, Mr. Jones, and then show up five hours later when the next shift is running. Right. And be like, you know, give my real name and stuff like that and this just vote is, for candidates. This is a problem with the judges, though, because when I went in Carolina County, what they asked me was my name. Uh, I incorrectly gave them my name because I am a second and yeah. I didn't include that. And I almost got eliminated from voting because I didn't get it. And I was like, she's like, uh, I'm not seeing you on here. And I'm like, oh, the, the second. It's the second. Uh, my yeah. it's not my dad it's my grandpa so it, it, there's no confusion here yeah uh, okay there you are and your birthday okay and your address and i got the address wrong too because i was still registered at my last place but it's mm -hmm. still in the same district i said okay well if it's not that it's probably 223 and she was like 223 but yeah, yeah, I, yeah i know that's it but i have to give the like i had to give all of my information and if you do that, you're not going to have voter fraud because you can't go in there and say Steve Jones. Right. They're going to say Steve Jones. Okay, what's your uh, what's your current DOB? address? DOB, current address, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and if they don't do it, that's their fault, and that's what we need to enforce. But voter fraud is less than one tenth of one percent. There is almost no voter fraud ever. Yeah. And the newsroom, speaking of that, did an episode about a woman in Tennessee who got disenfranchised. Turns out that's based on a real story. Yeah. A woman who marched. In Selma, in nineteen in the nineteen sixties, was disenfranchised because she stopped driving, and she didn't have an ID. She fought for the right to vote, right. and then is later disenfranchised. I, I can't even the anger. I, I period can't period even yeah. period. It just I, you know I spend more time yelling at my computer and my television screen. But again, it see to me it just seems like a. This is like a. Shouldn't we be working on big problems? Like what? Like, I don't know. Uh, the uh, prison 
<laughs> the massive amount of people we have in prisons the 1040, on nonviolent offenses. 1,041% increase since 2002. Yeah. Since our first election. Yeah. Or, we should probably work on that. Uh, I don't know. There's uh, there's problems with the police shooting people. Okay, yes. The, the murder rate amongst police officers. Yeah. Sure. I, I yell at many of the videos. And there doesn't seem to be much accountability. Oh, no, no, no. There is the ones who get caught, uh, who get defended until the video comes out. And then they're saying, oh, this is horrible. We never should have. Oh, defended. there's also the massive violation of our civil liberties. Okay, yeah, there's that. Yeah, sure. You know what, though? I really don't like it when black people vote. Maybe right. we should just, maybe we should focus on that one first. Well, here's the Civil problem. liberties can wait. Here's the much like <laughs> Much like it was for the black people, civil liberties can wait for quite a long right, time. Sure, That's sure. what we learned. And you know what? Uh, it's one of those first in, uh, or last in, first out situations. Right. You got the vote last, so you're the first one to lose it. <laughs> Luckily, as a white, uh, non-landowning man, I, I am cl- second to last to lose it. So. Yeah. But no, it, here's the, the reason that they don't want you to vote. And women can't vote, right? Uh, they No, they can. Oh. Um, although we really should uh, address that women's suffrage issue. I think we should end women's suffrage as soon as possible. I think, I think we should just redo the, uh, uh, the man show bit where they go to the <laughs> fair. And it's like, we'll end women's suffrage. No, uh, listen, man show was in 2005. Yeah. I have seen videos made in 2014. Outside of, by the way, like femin- the feminist departments, yeah. the women's studies departments, right. where they're getting hundreds of signatures, and I'm like, you're, you're in women's studies. <laughs> you don't know what women's suffrage is? Yeah. Like, come on, guys. But so It's so funny because the word sounds so much like suffrage, mm-hmm. which isn't a real word. No. So here's what I'll say. Uh, the reason that they are trying to take the vote is because the more people they take the vote from... Suffering is the word you're looking for. Suffering. Suffrage. And... No, end women's suffering. Right, but uh, suffrage, no E. Like right. It's S- R- S-U-F-F-R-A-G-E is the right to vote. Right. Yeah. But I'm saying there's no such word as suffrage. Oh, no, no. Or suffrage. suffrage. Yeah. Yeah. S- suffering. There's an English lesson for you. There we go. Grammar. Suffering is what you're looking for. So, uh, what was I saying? Uh, oh, they're trying to take the vote slowly away from people who don't, don't wouldn't, who they can't convince to vote the way that they want. Right. Because here's the thing. Uh, why do why is it easy to convince poor white people that um, they should vote against their own interest and vote for tax cuts on rich people because they have this image in their head that one day they will be rich and white well they're already white but they'll be rich yeah and because of that they don't want to tax rich people now because they don't want to be taxed later or because they think I, of themselves as rich I like to uh, I would like to remind everybody who is really concerned about this voter ID stuff yeah that at one point in this country's history, Ninety uh, percent of black people, or somewhat close to it, an yeah. overwhelming majority of black people voted for Republicans every time. Uh, but uh, that's not fair to say, though, because it's uh, the parties reversed in the sixties. Right, but and, I'm saying, yeah, you know, there's there, there's nothing keeping these parties from reversing again. No, absolutely, and, and I do love that. Um, by the way, I love the, that when the Republicans say we're the party of Lincoln, the party of Roosevelt. Yeah, you don't hear anybody after 1960. Yeah, it's like all of our good guys are back when we were Democrats. <laughs> Was and it, we're going to look at that. You're a party of Nixon, too, right? Uh, we, yeah. Uh, I mean, he was a Republican. Um, mm-hmm. Not really our... We don't really know how he slipped past the castle gates. <laughs> the party of Reagan? Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, clearly. But you never hear... Party of Bush. Bush. You never Which hear, one? You never, hear Reagan, <laughs> you never hear Reagan and Lincoln in the same breath. No. It's, it's two different things, because it's two different people saying that. Anyway, so, so here's the... But yet... Yeah, yeah, whenever anybody's blaming Democrats for anything, we go back as far as we feel like. Oh, yeah. Right? Andrew Jackson. <laughs> fucking Indian fucking, killer. Fucking Obama, fucking FDR, fucking Andrew Jackson. Oh, yeah. Thomas Jefferson. They're all the same. Right. This party hasn't changed one bit. The whips. Go back to the whip party. Wig. 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 <laughs> what did I say? Whip? Whip. Wig party. <laughs> no, so here's what it comes down to, though, is that, um, that the, the reason that this is so good for America is because people need to get fired up. Yeah. And I was talking about before that I saw videos. I've been I've been watching for a long time these uh like protest videos and you see people getting their ass kicked. And I mean I was in New York in 2003 when we were protesting the Iraq war starting and a lot of ass whipping and a lot of arre- detainments where mm-hmm. we would just get shipped elsewhere, held for 8 hours and then released. Yeah. Um but for the first time I've seen a protest in DC that the million mask march that happened on the 5th. Um, people actually fighting back 
and like fighting the police and saying that we're not going to take it anymore. And I think it steps in the right direction. So um, that's why I think this is a good thing because people are going to wake up and they're going to see these problems. And one of two things is going to happen. Either everyone's going to get so fed up with it that they take direct action, which would be like the marching, or in two years maybe we'll actually have a shift and a bunch of independent candidates can run and get votes. But other way, the, the, the republic is falling. It has fallen. I can mean, I, this is Star Wars shit. So. Can, I, can I talk about another dangerous political movement? <laughs> sure. Taylor Swift <laughs> has taken the country by storm Yeah. now that she decided that she doesn't want to have any uh, uh, roots to the country side that she never really had. Oh, yeah. Do you notice that? She got famous yeah. for country, and now she doesn't even sing country anymore. Yeah. The the largest genre in America, yeah, like the most popular genre in America, she uses that to get in, saying Mm -hmm. like I'm a country artist, and then all of a sudden, uh, now she's like a guest ambassador for New York. I think was it? Yeah, I don't know. New York City tourism has brought her in as like the guest ambassador because now she lives there. Oh well, yeah, that's super country. As opposed to uh, Nashville, where she used to live, right? Or L.A. I think she I think she had for tax purposes only a place in Nashville. <laughs> yeah. That's where her mail went. I'm a Nashville star, country star. Um I'm having I'm having a bit of a crisis with Taylor Swift. Okay. An internal crisis. I, I was hoping that we could take this time to talk about it. Sure. She writes a catchy song. She yes. She knows the formula. Well, uh, let me put it this way. Somebody who works for her <laughs> writes a very catchy song. Yes, exactly. Uh, and she seems like a pleasant enough person that I don't want to like. Like Lady Gaga releases a catchy song, but I don't like Lady Gaga. Right. I don't want anything to do with Lady. I don't want to. That meat suit. I don't want to sit across from a, a dining room table from Lady Gaga. Right. You know? I want to. Taylor Swift, I feel like if you just sat the two of us at a table, I could. Have a fun evening of conversation with her or something like that. She's I, a nice enough person. I feel like I could sleep with her and then get an album written after me. That's yeah, Michael, that that so. would be that's Rob's deal. Yeah, he wants to be a Taylor Swift song. Mm, absolutely. Um, I just she's not she's not real though. That's the thing about music these days. They're not real people. But how do you mean she's not real? Like she's. So I, w- I was on uh, my favorite app, Umano, earlier. <laughs> right, yeah. And uh, I don't know if I sent you this one or not, but it was uh, how Taylor Swift took over social media. No, I and then if you that. scroll through more, just... Te- like, I-, I honestly believe that if you type in how Taylor Swift conquered and then leave it blank into Google, right. you'll come up with 975,000 results about all the things that she conquered. Country music. How she conquered country music, how she conquered pop music, how she conquered social media, how she conquered cats with funny names, how she conquered, you know. Does she have a cat with funny names? I think she does. I know she has cats. Oh, it's, uh, I I did hear this because it was on that John Cleese thing on the Grand Norton show. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, 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 Olivia Benson. That's right. It's the name of her cat. Yeah, no, and I decided I could never date Taylor Looks Swift. Looks nothing like Marissa Hargitay. Yeah, well, I could never date uh, Taylor Swift because of the cats. Can't do it. Here's an example of why I think Taylor Swift is a, like, I don't get it, okay? okay? Yeah. So, there was a video that I saw, when did I post it, like two days ago? Uh, yeah. Yesterday, maybe? Mm-hmm. No, no, because it was during, the, it was like the middle of the week, Wednesday. That's right. Wednesday. Okay, so yeah. I, the, a, a video went viral suddenly. Yeah. Somebody realized that a uh, tape of a 1988 gymnastics competition, or uh, aerobics. Yeah, it was a workout video that you do at home, basically. Right. It was like the championship aerobics team right. doing their routine. Yeah. And it matched up almost perfectly with uh, Shake It Off. Right. And they put the video online, and then, you know, 30 million people saw it in a day, or whatever the case may be. I think they talked about it on Ellen, too. Like, it was, like, popular. Yeah. But yeah. the fact that, I mean, you can't. You can't walk a single step in this country without hearing Taylor Swift shake it off somewhere. But I felt like I listened or I watched that video like seven times. Right. Myself. And how many times have you seen much, the music video? Oh, God. I don't know. A lot? A lot. Really? Yeah. You watched that Taylor Swift video? Yeah. Why? 
because I can't. This is part of the the. the I can't decide where I where I stand on this. Okay. Because. Because here's what my so, okay. So problem. here's here's my problem. Here's my fucking problem. Yeah. Uh, I throughout my entire life did not have a problem with pop music. Right. I could tell the pop music that was terrible, like you know, that was just being like sold to, like the the ninety eight degrees and the LFOs and the insects and stuff like that. <laughs> okay. Like I could just, I I could just feel like I somebody like girl, stop by. <laughs> seven seven fat white guys in a room deciding how <laughs> they can make more money off in sync. Well, and you know that same guy put together like seven boy bands in a row. Yeah, and just replaced the one that he had with a new one. Right, exactly. Yeah. It was it was. Uh, it was paint by numbers pop bands. Right, yeah. But pop has done a lot of good. Sure. Like, let us not forget that Beatles are pop. Right. That Prince is pop. Michael Jackson is pop. And uh, T Pain brought his auto tune, which, by the way, he also actually sings really awesome without yeah, it. Yeah, what the fuck? What the fuck is that? Anyway, yeah, so. That's a whole other time. But there, I, I do not have a have a, a blanket, I hate pop music thing. Right. Because some of it's good and some of it's bad. And yes, that. Fucking Shake It Off is an incredibly catchy song. Yeah. And if it gets stuck in your head, so I'll help you God if you don't watch that music video nine times in a row. Well, and I was going to say, if if I I would have predicted based on that alone that Taylor Swift would take off. If that was her first song ever, you know, yeah. like Fancy was with Iggy right. I'd have been like, oh, this bitch is going to be huge. Or uh, uh, All About That Bass. All About That Bass, yeah. But see, that that's the thing. Okay, so uh, the song, All About That Bass. Is... Well, and I called that for another reason. Because I said that is the new excuse pejorative. That's the new fat girl anthem. Right. Because girls who are proud of being big girls are like, oh, fuck you, skinny bitches. And then it was weird because Nicki Minaj had the song at the same time that was like, fuck skinny bitches. Yeah. But it was all about the positivity in that. But here's the thing. Song. Here's the thing. Uh, I I haven't heard anything else she's done. Who, Meg, Megan Trainor? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. But I can tell you right now, somebody, she didn't, that, that was a... 45-year-old white guy, bald yeah. Jewish white guy who wrote that song. No, no, no. She wrote it. She wrote it. She wrote it, and she shopped it for a year. Katy Perry said no. Taylor Swift actually ironically said no. And so finally, a rich white guy was like, you know what? You're kind of a big girl. Why don't you just do it yourself? She was not a performer because she didn't have that positive image of herself. And finally, they said, the only way this is getting done if you do well, it. She's not she a singer it. either because she that the shit's auto-tuned like crazy. Yeah, no, and, and she's not. She's a writer. She is a writer, and she wrote the song, three or four of the songs on her album. She had been shopping I, around, and I don't like the the fact that this is being sold to people as an anthem. Okay, well, like okay, so I was I was uh when I was driving around with uh, my sister Laura earlier, mm-hmm. uh, a Blink One Eighty Two song came on, classic Blink. I think it was off like uh, Dude Ranch or something like that. Right, and I just I. Realized I never talked to her about it, and I said, "Have you heard the new Blink One Eighty Two album?" She's like, "No, but I heard it was terrible." I'm like, "Yeah, they auto tuned uh, Tom DeLonge." Why? Because it's poppy. Why? It's poppy. Why? That's the qu- perfectly yeah. adequate question. Punk rock is not supposed to be clean and easy. Yeah, it's a little off. But punk rock doesn't sell. True. How many I punk guess. rock albums have you bought in your life? None. None. That wasn't really my my genre though. So I mean, it, and we're kind of. We're reaching at the at the cusp, calling Blink One Eighty Two a punk rock band. Right, but I mean, really, kind of like as soon as Enema of the State came out, it was everything from that point on has been sort of like pop rock, right, rather than pop punk. But I could I could make the argument for you know Buddha and Dude Ranch and stuff like that. But uh, and I was listening to rap at that time, so yeah, that was my coming out of the Christian music phase. But you you can't like uh, they're auto tuning Tom Tom DeLong. Mm-hmm. Because maybe it sells more, con- like maybe they've gotten enough, like they've done the Twitter analytics to figure out that people didn't like his voice. No, no, the no. people who didn't get it didn't like his voice. I don't think that's that at all. I think that they do it so naturally now that there was not a thought that they wouldn't. We know yeah, we do this to every album. We have to do it. That we do it to every album. One of one of the greatest musicians who's ever lived. Te- well, seriously though, I mean maybe just lyricist. But his lyrics are so great that his music stands a test of time that's unlike any other is Leonard Cohen. Okay, yeah. Leonard Cohen would not be shit today. No. They would not let somebody who sound like, you know, a born with the gift of a golden voice. Like yes. that kind of sound. Yeah. Be an artist anymore. Nope. You it's the same shit. You don't get that. You don't. I just, I, I want, 
I want somebody who goes up on the fucking stage and cuts their arm and bleeds like normal people. I not don't, don't know that that's so great. We should look for the bleeding. Well, I mean, Ozzy, really? I, I was probably more of an Iggy kind of thing. Sure, okay. Iggy and the Stooges yeah. kind of move, or or a uh, uh, what's the name of the guy who killed his girl? Allegedly killed his girlfriend. Courtney Love was in the movie about him. Shit. Oh. Fucking, you know who I'm talking about. In New York, uh, stabbed his girlfriend. They were both drug addicts. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, Sid Vicious. Sid Vicious, yeah. yeah. But he did the whole, like, would get cut on stage and, like, bleed and sweat on people. Yeah, but, I mean, like, the days of what I mean by cut yourself and bleed. Put your heart out. Put your heart out there. Like, fucking mean it. I don't need costume changes in the middle of my concert. <laughs> I prefer you to be wearing like those torn off t shirts and right. you know, jeans that look like they you know, were bought at a thrift store but were bought at you know, an outrageous boutique for a thousand dollars. We can't wear the t shirt of our own band on stage. I I just I, I remember so much of my musical life was spent like the early parts listening to Motown mm-hmm. and all those great like seventy sixties and seventies bands. Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd was a huge early. Uh, my dad would put on put on Pink Floyd records while he sat out on the porch, drinking a and scotch, I, and I would listen to them, and it affected me deeply. Yeah. And then the first time I really honestly cared about like, you know, current music mm-hmm. was when I heard "Smells Like Teen Spirit," and that opening lick, that first time I heard it, was like. Fuck it! Oh my god! Like my brain exploded. I was just like, "What is this?" And then the, you know the drums kick in. It's like, bada, 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 boom, bada. yeah. I'm just like, "What the fuck is this?" Like, <laughs> now, see, I had that moment in college. Weirdly enough, I didn't but, hear Nirvana until college. But so. like, you know, I, I was you know sitting in my mom's van, like probably in the back back of the back seat, the one that faces the opposite direction, so I can see traffic coming at me. <laughs> right fucking sitting in the back of a Taurus station wagon and then all of a sudden I hear like boom but I'm you know I'm just like what the fuck <laughs> like right now you know some mom is pulling up to Royal Farm and just saying like oh you sitting here and play with the radio I'm gonna go about a pack of cigarettes and the this is obviously a Baltimore family right <laughs> Dundalk <And> the, <laughs> <laughs> the fucking baby seat like in the front uh, in the front, front passenger, passenger seat <laughs> Don't be touching none of them knobs here, dear. <laughs> the uh, the kid's just wandering, unbelted around the back seat. <laughs> She's got it on a leash and just tied it to one of the headrests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the uh, some some kid is just going to be sitting in the car and just like, all of a sudden it's going to be like, shake it up, shake it off. And they're going to be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like. That's going to be the moment for somebody. And yeah. I don't like the fact that that's what we're like. Yeah. So Taylor Swift is going to be the, is the first platinum artist of the year. Of there 2014. Is, yeah. There has not been a single record in 2014 that sold more than a million copies. Yep. Fucking first figure that out. Well, when, uh, uh, well and, and it's because, um, well, because people don't have to buy albums anymore. That's the right. one. Uh, it's because not a lot of people are putting out albums anymore. True. They'll put out singles all year, not an actually or an EP. Or wait, is it LP? LP, not an EP. Yeah. Um, so like, there, there's all of these factors. And uh, one thing that Taylor Swift did this week too uh, is that you, uh, she pulled her music from Spotify and all of the other streaming things. I don't have to buy the album because if I have a like my Spotify tuned in the way that I have it, mm-hmm. it only plays music I like. Yeah. And when new music comes out, I hear it if it's on that. Yeah. If it's on the, the station. So if I have a Taylor Swift station, which I do, um, it, new Taylor Swift would pop up on my Spotify station. I d- and I also pay the seven ninety. So, so here's here's the I guess this is where my great my great personal battle lay. Yeah. Pink Floyd's last album ever is being released today. Right. As of the the release of this podcast, Tuesday, right. the release of the last Pink Floyd album ever. Pink Floyd is a incredible band right? with a long storied history. Nobody is ever going to fucking touch Dark Side of the Moon as far as consecutive weeks right? on the Billboard charts. Yeah. Like, it's just not, there's no, nothing could ever, it's, 
It's Cal Ripken Jr. It's just done. Well, John Lennon comes back from the dead and records a Beatles album. That might break it. But I even doubt that because we have such a short attention span <laughs> no, these true, days. True. Yeah. It was on there for like seven years or something like that. Yeah. Some stupid. Some stupid long. But when they were bringing vinyl, when you bought the vinyl. Right. But I mean, the, the, the fact that there's some, like, Pink Floyd is releasing its last album. And it's already broken pre-sale records on Amazon. Right. People are obviously interested in this. Wait, which, by the way, let me interject there. Yeah. You can actually purchase my book pre-sale on Amazon right now. Yeah, it's, it's available. The uh, the Movement Insurrection, or I'm, my name, Robert Incheek. I'm pretty sure 100,000 people have already pre-ordered it. There's been a lot of pre-order, but I do enjoy Amazon pre-order because it gives me an idea of what's going to sell. Yeah. Anyway, so Pink Floyd, breaking records on the pre-sale. Yeah. Right. Coming in second in the record books only to Robert Incheek. On movement the, interaction. the movement interaction, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I feel like I'm seeing a lot of it. Yeah. Maybe it's because my internet surfing abilities have fine-tuned enough that Google, everybody knows, knows what you. to tell me. Google knows you, yes. Just knows that if there's a Pink Floyd story out there, I want to read it. Right. I just, like, I, I feel like I can't, I can't step one step without... Taylor Swift being a part of my life these days. Yep. And why isn't the last album of one of the greatest bands in the history of the world not? Because it's not. Like, you know what? And swear to God, you sit down a 16, you know, like the, the conversation we've had about like uh, uh, innocent girls listening to shit Rob says. Right. <laughs> yeah. If we took just like a sample of 10 uh, 16 year old girls mm -hmm. and just sat them in a room. I don't with, think you and I in a room with sixteen-year-old girls is a good. Well, no, we'd have somebody else do it. Oh, okay, all right, fine. You know, but we just have an iPod in front of them, mm -hmm. and like the headphones, right? And just sit there and listen to this, and we play Taylor Swift first, and see how long throughout the album they get. The whole thing, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Probably listen to the whole thing, yeah. and then let it go on repeat, and then uh, just put on Pink Floyd and see how long they stick with that, right? And they're probably going to like you know. 10 minutes in or whatever. I don't know how the, the Pink Floyd album goes. I've been waiting. I want to buy it on Tuesday. I want to go to the right. actual record store and buy it. Yeah. The CD, put it in my car, and then drive around and listen to it. Right. That's my that's my idea of, like, the perfect... I feel like you're leaving out a detail. Right. Is there another detail that's included in that? Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, wait. Actually, no, there is another detail. Yeah. Windows down. Okay, windows down. <laughs> windows down. I like how you're talking windows about it. Windows down. The voice is calm. Drive through the country. Yeah. Just want to put it in and drive. Blast the Pink Floyd. Just enjoy it. <laughs> Free your mind, man. Right. No, but... Pop some yeah, mushrooms. Yeah, man. ten... <laughs> <laughs> then I could just sit in... Sit in the car in park and yeah. just move the wheel and be like, <laughs> I'm fucking in Nevada already! <laughs> For the guy who's obviously never done mushrooms before. Anyway. I'm just sitting in my room, lying in the bed, doing Hunter S. Thompson impressions. <laughs> shooting random things at the wall. I was going to say, first of all, you don't have to be in the car. You could just sit in your chair and be like, <laughs> I'm driving. Oh, my God. I'm in Nevada. <laughs> Does anybody know what time zone I'm in? <laughs> I've been driving for like 40 million years. Yes. Yes, yeah. you have. Yeah, anyway, but those so those sixteen year old girls are not going to give a shit about oh, no. Pink Floyd, and they're not going to listen. It, the, it'll be, and you know what? I'm, skip. I'm not skip imagining. Skip. I'm not imagining that the album is going to be particularly good. Yeah, I think it will. Well, I mean, it, it'll, if you for like you, if, for me, good. it'll be great. Yeah, but you know, for the average person who's just like, if this is the first Pink Floyd album you ever listened to. I don't imagine that you're going to like it much. Right. If uh, you have had a, a long history of you know the Wall and. Uh, you know, wish you were here and all the. You have the poster on the wall. I just yawned and saw. It's, yeah, I, I have the Pink Floyd yeah. poster right there. Yep. And even fucking, I love Division Bell. I know there's a lot of people who give shit for it, but I love Division Bell. I love everything. I love everything about Pink Floyd. I like Sid Barrett era. I like the Roger Waters era. I like the David Gilmore era. It all works for me. And there's Rob snoring. So this will be more of the Pink Floyd podcast and. Just kidding. We're just gonna put uh, Dark Side of the Moon on and just let it ride. We should have. What we should have done is just written up everything we wanted to say in this episode and try to link it up with Dark Side of the Moon. Oh shit! That would have been so good. 
Yeah. Have you done that? You, I mean, of course you have. The uh, uh, Pink Floyd and um, nope. You've never done uh, no. Wizard of Oz. No. You what? Know, you know why? Why? Because this is an argument. Okay. Now we're really going to fucking alienate sixteen-year-old girls when they okay. hear about this part of Pink Floyd. That worked on certain versions of Wizard of Oz right. and certain versions of Dark Side of the Moon. I've seen it on it, those two versions then. Because the original, it had to be like a VHS or like... No, I saw it on DVD. On a DVD? DVD. It was the collector's edition DVD, which was okay, supposed maybe that to be had like the, first, the original... The, the, still, the same syncing or something yeah, like that? Yeah, the original... Because something film. somewhere along the line... Uh, I was going to do that, and somebody told me that you can't anymore. And I read like a huge article about it yeah. online, where this this is this is the truth here. Mm-hmm. Pink Floyd had an album called Echoes. Yes, on Echoes is a song called Echoes, right? Which is one of my favorite Pink Floyd songs. The original print version of it, like first run release record version, twenty three some odd minutes long. Right. They released it again on CD. And cut it down slightly. I think it was like 22, okay. 21 and change minutes long. Right. They released it again when they did uh, like a collector's or anniversary edition. Cut it down oh so more slightly. Right. They released Echoes, the best of Pink Floyd double disc CD. Mm-hmm. And it was an almost a criminal 17 minutes long. Criminal. Criminal 17 minute long. So we went over the course of time from like a 23-minute track to a 17-minute track. Thankfully, Pink Floyd released the uh, complete box set, which had every single remastered original version of every song. I want to say, and I mean, keep in mind, we went to so every single every single CD that's in the uh, the box set I have there. It was like the first run release of the record. I, I was gonna say uh, we we were in college in the age of Napster, and if I yeah. remember correctly, now that I'm thinking about it, it wasn't a CD nor was it a DVD. It was a torrent of the of yeah, it was probably the torrent of the original Wizard of Oz from 1939. It was taken a torrent created from a printing, uh, a film printing, yeah, and a torrent of the original vinyl, vinyl to I mean we. I bought my dad one of these things where you can put the uh, the actual vinyl disc on a player and it converts it to an MP3. Yeah, and also plays. I it. have that right over here. Oh, you got one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so well, his is way smaller than that, but his is like the travel version. Oh, okay. Um, hipster version. It's like the super hipster version. Yeah, it's the one you could take to a coffee shop and listen to vinyl in the coffee yeah. shop. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, because <laughs> my dad's a huge hipster. I saw those today at Urban Outfitters. I'm sure he did. Um, but no, so I think if I remember correctly, it was we had. One playing to one screen, like Dan was playing uh, Dark Side of the Moon on the torrent on his, and I had the computer monitor rather than the laptop. So we were like watching it on mine on a torrent, and I, I'm not, I'm not. Here's the thing, I'm sure it's it's crazy. It's, you should it's watch kind of it. it's kind of close, but like I've heard that like the way God intended it, yeah. The because God has something to do with this, of I'm course. sure of it. Yes, sure. VHS. Or, like, you know, obviously, if you could get a projector, that would right. be even better. But if you could get, like, a original release, sil- or, uh, I almost said Silence of the Lambs, Wizard of Oz, yeah. and a record of Dark Side of the Moon, yes. I've heard the syncing is just fucking phenomenally, like, mind-blowing crazy. Like, the moment the first clock chimes in track three is... Time. The moment that the clocks appear yeah. um, in the movie. Right. Ridiculous. Yeah. Like, and Which brings like, us full circle. Yeah. Taylor Swift took down the uh took down the song off the uh gymnastic or the aerobics people video. Right. That was taking the internet by storm. And we were talking about this too before. I think videos like that do help an artist more than they hurt the artist. Well, I can almost think of no op- or no situation where it hurts the artist, no matter who you are. Cuz I was going to say if you're Taylor Swift it doesn't hurt you that much. Right. Cuz I don't I don't think anybody is like not buying the album. Because that was going to buy the album originally because they saw this. Right. Uh, the record label might have issue with the fact that people are watching this video rather than watching the one that they released on YouTube. On Vivo, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
uh, so they can't get that kickback from YouTube kind of right. thing. But honestly, like, you remember when uh, Aisha was out, like that viral video? Oh my god, yes, I love that. Now show notes, but yeah, well, yeah, we yeah. got <laughs> Aisha. But you know who bought Aisha from Outlandish? Like two days after watching that video, this guy right here. Did you? Yeah. Oh, from like iTunes. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I downloaded it for free. Yeah, yeah. you would. I mean, I would have. Fucking yes, rebel. Obviously. Yeah. But, uh... Revolution! <laughs> anarchy in the U.S. <laughs> there will be a day! <laughs> there will be a day, my friends! Where you will download all your music for free! <laughs> <laughs> when will this day be? <laughs> Actually, it happened. <laughs> it happened a while ago. A lot of people got sued. They made big spectacles of, like, suing grandmothers and... Speaking of which, fourteen-year-olds. My whole point of that conversation was Taylor Swift has become the new Metallica. Yes, and those words have never been put on any recording format before. I don't think. But no, I think I think that's an original. We just we've just done that. Taylor Swift is the new Metallica because, I, again, we went to college in the age of Napster. Right. And what, Rob, back when Rob looked exactly like the guy from, from Napster. Napster. Yeah. yeah, and apparently still do. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, uh, no, because he's balding. I get that fresh head of hair. Yeah. Anyway, so that wig is impressive. His <laughs> point being, um, that I because would, it's true. I would have never, I would have never listened to Metallica, and I didn't. I went from Christian music to rap, and from rap, I went through like this Nirvana punk rock, like let's pretend it's ninety four, even though it's two thousand and four. Yeah. And then basically to pop music after that. So I would have never listened to Metallica, but you know why I did? Because somebody downloaded the torrent and played it. And I said, oh, shit, that's nice, and we're on LimeWire, so I can see your list. Yeah. Not that you had a list, but I could see your list, because we were all on the same network. I'm like, let's try this. And I played that, and I liked it. And the only t- the reason I would have bought a Metallica album, which I would have, is because I heard it for the first time on a torrent for free. Yeah. I didn't have to buy the album to hear it. Um, and then they made asses of themselves by making such a huge deal about the copyright infringement. Here's the problem. This is this is where it all goes wrong. Like, uh, just take the two of us here. Right. I am the artist. Sure. You are the money. You are the bank. Right. Uh, so I am the type who wants to be like, you know, like, oh man, as soon as as long as people see it, I don't give a shit if I lose money on this. Right. I don't really like, you know, it's not about the money for me. Like, it, I just want, I want my message to be heard. Right. And then meanwhile, I leave the room, and you go like, you fuckers are paying for that. Every single one of you. I don't yeah. give a shit what he said. Right. That's worth money. Yep. And then I get a check for $10 million, and I don't ask where it came from. I just go like, oh, wow, people really like it. People support me and financially. And right. Give it, you know, like, that. the problem was that they should have just left it to RIA8. Oh, yeah. yeah because RIA8, nobody, nobody fucking likes you, right. RIA8. Nobody is, nobody, yeah. everybody. Nobody's getting RIA fan tattoos on their fucking tramp stamp or something like that, you right. know? But Metallica put their face out but there. But Metallica, yeah. Lars Ulrich had to march into Napster's offices and, like, you know, personally serve subpoenas and shit like that. Yeah. Like, everything, they put themselves out there as, as like, the... <sighs> it was, they were the face of copyright. Every single person they talked to. Yeah. Every single, like, artist that got interviewed about Napster was saying things like, you know, whether they were on it or against it. Yeah. The same thing sort of remained true. Like, none of those people were really that affected by Napster. No. Everybody was still living cushy lives. And that's my problem. The people that. the people who were affected were people like fucking Outlandish, the people who did Aisha. Right. Like, <laughs> no, I bought the record. I right. bought that song. But I imagine a lot of people did, too. I imagine a lot of people were. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of people did, but I'm saying the the fact that there was torrenting available at the time, right, made it so that 90 percent of the people who would have bought this no name band song. Here's the thing. Let's say that you you find Outlandish and you like Aisha and you didn't down even. Let's say you download for free the whole album. Yeah. Is there a way for you to go see them for free? No. Oh, oh. So really, what this comes down to is we can throw a tour that costs us ten dollars a person to perform, and we actually charge them one hundred and eighty dollars per person. So we've made a huge profit on that show. Well, the idea is that that records don't actually make money anymore. 
anymore. They they're don't. Just, and the, they're uh, just promotion. Exactly. It's promotion for it's promotion for the tour. Right. So who cares if you get it for free? It's great that you make money off of it. But it's rich people who want to make more money. That's what it is. It's, but you know what I think part of the problem is too though, is that people take it like box office. Right. Like, movies still have people coming out week one to, like this fucking Friday. I'm gonna be there for Dumb and Dumber. Right. Two. I'm gonna be there. Yeah. I'm gonna see it. Do you see Interstellar going... yet, by the way? No. Are you gonna? You don't want to see it? No, I'll see it. Okay. But I, I prefer to go to uh, see it at the center where they have the uh, film cut. Oh, okay. Rather than I don't want to see it in digital. I want to see it on film. Okay. Yeah. Um. Though I guess there's so many digital effects in it. Does it really even matter? I should call Zach. No, I was gonna say my opinion of it is that I know I know he went to, he went to the arc light and saw the seventy millimeter cut. Yeah. And uh I didn't talk to him about it, but I, I think he wanted to see it in IMAX too. So maybe I feel like because it isn't all just film, it's not gonna matter. It's the film of a digital cut. Yeah. Film has warmth though. And you I mean here's the thing that Sorry, you, we're going you off, would appreciate we're going it. off the rails. Hold on. Let me yeah. finish my thought. Go ahead. Film like Opening box off n- numbers means something to some people. Right. Like, it's the success or failure. You know, if Dumb and Dumber makes $50 million and it's opening weekend, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, my God, it's the biggest comedy ever in the history right. of the world. I can't believe that it made $50 million. We have to green light 19 more Dumb and Dumber movies. Which they won't do. Right. But, I'm, yeah. you know, obviously this is a hypothetical. If it Not- makes $5 million, right. then they're going to be like, oh, holy shit, nobody likes Dumb and Dumber anymore. This is a huge mistake. Right. Like, I still think we live in a world a little bit. I mean, there's lowered expectation because of torrenting and yeah. Spotify and fucking music being terrible these days. <laughs> but, you know, if Taylor Swift sold, she sold a, like 1.2 million records in the first week. So that's, you know, that's obviously a huge success. Oh, first platinum album of the year. Yeah. Everything's great. Well, and after she, sold, she pulled it, your ability to see it anywhere else. Right. But if she else. sold 400,000 copies, right. then there'd be people fucking putting guns in their mouths <laughs> at a record label. They'd be like, oh my God, fucking 400,000, that's it? Yeah. Like, Taylor oh, Swift is... Taylor Swift you. is a property and a brand with a rareness, and people like her. And 400,000 puts you, still puts you at the top of the Billboard chart. Oh, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, by quite a healthy margin, right, too. Yeah. 80,000 get you on the charts now. Yeah. But uh, but no, I, I, I see what you're saying. And yes, I... I but there's, it's still, there's, still, there's still a world where album sales matter to somebody. It's short-sighted thinking, though. It's just like the movie. Th- Dumb and Dumber, Dumb and Dumber 2, this, that's coming out, does 5 million. Yeah. It sucks. But you know what? People like me are going to buy the fucking DVD because you want to have it. You know what I mean? I can't remember who said it, but like uh, somebody, uh, somebody, uh, it was a comedy director, mm-hmm. uh, and his film bombed opening weekend, like really bombed. And somebody asked him, like, uh, why do you think your film did so poorly in the opening weekend? He's like, uh, well, you know, I got to release it theatrically. Obviously, that's sort of the model. You open theatrically, and then you really, you know, if it's a property like this, you have to go theatrical first. Right. That's the respect. That's the prestige route to go. Uh, but honestly, I didn't imagine that many people would go to the theaters and see it opening weekend because this isn't, you know, most theaters aren't really cool with you bringing your bong in. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And this that's kind of that's that's the audience that I imagine is going to be watching this film. Right. So... Well, I think was that mm. Jay Chandrashakar from Could have been. I, I honestly don't remember. I feel like that's something that I've heard not him but the other guy. Um the uh, white guy with the mustache, not far of him, but the other guy. Steve Lemmy. Steve Lemmy. I think I've yeah. heard Steve Lemmy say the same thing. It's like, yeah, well, you gotta go through the box office, but we don't expect that to happen. Yeah. Well, our money comes from the guys who are taking bong rips on their couch yeah. watching our movies. Who bought the DVD or yeah. got it from Redbox or whatever. Whatever. Yeah, yeah that's where the, that's where their money comes from. It's not because again, I, Maryland legalizes well, you still wouldn't be able to smoke in the theater. But I guess you no. could stand outside and puff a blunt right before you go in. I don't think you're allowed to do it in public though, are you? Uh it depends what state Alaska will be able to. But yeah, but nobody no lives rules, there. Yeah, no rules in Alaska. So I mean, really, I feel like you're, you know, if you're 14 miles away from your closest neighbor, you can do whatever the shit you want. No, but I mean, you'll be able to do it in public. So you oh, can okay. go to town and do it in the. Um, you can you can go to <laughs> go to uh, what's the Wasilla? 
Yeah. Go to Wasilla and just be like, hey, Palin, mm-hmm. look what I'm doing. And look at Russia, because apparently you can see it from there. Yeah. Uh, but no, like in Colorado, you can't do it in public. You could do it on your front porch, but you can't do it in a public park or whatever. Yeah. But, um, yeah. No, so it'd be and you can't do it in hotels either, or most hotels, I think, was the uh, rule. Yeah, I, well, I want to talk about that next week. About Did you see that thing about the smoke detector? No. It tattles on you? No. Oh, God, big brother. Yeah, yeah, big brother. Don't even want to know. They're installing it in Vegas hotels, though. Next trip to Vegas, you know. <laughs> Next <laughs> next trip to Vegas, we got to take a walk deep into the desert if we want to do anything mischievous. Apparently, that's the way that it works. Yeah. So mm. anyway, we'll talk about that later. But yeah. uh, so Taylor Swift has a first platinum album, and it's upsetting. You would think you would think that the people in Vegas would want you to do whatever you can to get fucking annihilated. So you, well, we'll talk about it later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but uh, you, I would agree with that. But apparently, there's <laughs> different perspectives. So. Because I would probably be more apt to spend a lot of money at the blackjack table if. I was of mind. I think it's uh, more about getting the cops off their back. Uh, Another thing that we can do to show the cops that they don't need to police us. We police yeah. ourselves. That's we what handle, it yeah, is. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so Taylor Swift has the first platinum album. I was disappointed because I was really hoping we were going to make it through 2014 with no platinum albums just to make the fucking point. All, all, the, all the best albums are backloaded this year. Yeah, yeah, for whatever reason. Or, but, not the best albums, but the ones that are going to sell a million copies. You know what else is backloaded? What? The uh, novels. Because I hear that, like, December, all the best novels are coming out. Like, December 1st? December 1st, in fact, the best novel of the year is coming out. So, so if you want to if you wanna make sure that they don't run out of digital copies of it, <laughs> you better pre-order it today. Well, here's what I'll tell you. Uh, my understanding from Amazon and from my publisher is that the order in which you buy it is the order that they distribute it. So there's a lot of books dropping on the first. If you get it now, the likelihood that it's sitting in your Kindle when you wake up on December 1st is very high. Ooh. If you buy it on the first, who knows when it'll actually get downloaded because of all of the bandwidth volume. Right. So it might be the second Good point. or the third before you get it. The earlier you pre-sale, the earlier you get it. You know what You know what I used to hate about iTunes when an album dropped that I was really excited about? And they did, they, Yeah, the bandwidth problem no it's when in the day is it finally tuesday oh right and yeah. released yeah because yeah. i remember there was like a michelle branch album that was released on i you know that was on itunes when i was buying music there and i said uh you know like oh man that's fucking tuesday right now it's midnight tuesday yeah no, no. <laughs> go on there and it's like not available i'm just like shit and, you know check every hour like i stayed up all night and just like yeah it's 7 a.m it's still not on there what the fuck like um, shit. If, eventually, uh, eventually, like, 10 a.m. rolls around and it's available, and I'm just like, thank God. But There's a documentary about people who make video games to release on Xbox Marketplace. Yeah. And that's a huge stress from the guy. The guy, he's, like, super OCD, and he's all worried about it, and he d- didn't never read the policy that said that our day starts between 10 and 12. Mm. So he's up at midnight looking for his game on Marketplace. It's not there. He's yeah. up at 8 a.m. It's not there. Nine, not there. He's calling uh, Xbox. He's calling Microsoft. Like, come on, man. My game's not up there. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it drops. And he's like, okay, good. Right, <laughs> now I'm all right. Yeah, I'm okay. Now. Um, but that's another good documentary people should watch. But uh, so uh, Taylor Swift is the band. I, I, here's the, I also have mixed feelings about her because I have a lot of emotion tied to Taylor Swift. And I don't want to like her, but it's so fucking catchy. But I still have reasons to hate her. So, you know what I, I mean. you know what I've done to get through my Taylor Swift period here. <laughs> What's that? I've listened to uh, uh, a lot of John Mayer to like counteract it. Oh Jesus Christ! I just listen. I listen to Shake It Off, and then I listen to an entire John Mayer album. I don't to, know. Like, that counteract. That's, I don't know that's going to help me. Then it just makes me want to put a gun in my mouth. <laughs> Bring you back to college. I know. Just listen to three by five over and over again until you cry all the tears out of your body. I was going to say, cause, what? Then I'm crying <laughs> over. Really, if John Mayer and Taylor Swift is picking which girl do I cry over. That's right. Really, who am I thinking about while I'm crying? Basically, there's a there is a John Mayer album that or a John Mayer song that has Taylor Swift in it. Is Half it? of my heart. Oh, super! So now I just cry over both of those yeah. girls. Perfect. Half of my heart. Half of my... I don't remember the lyrics. He's such a... He looks like he smells. Like, now... Like, John Mayer, when I was in college, looked like... Uh, like, he smelled like patchouli. Like, he probably See, John smelled John like Mayer, patchouli. John Mayer has, like, progressed... Okay, so Taylor Swift... Just, this will be my last point. I swear. <laughs> yeah. uh, Taylor Swift, you know, like, did the whole, like, wannabe Nashville thing, country right. music wannabe, and then just... This album shifted to New York. She's just, like, yeah. full-on pop. It's not even... Not trying anymore. Don't even, don't even question whether or not she's an... 
country artist anymore. John Mayer moved around a bit, mm-hmm. and his albums have a very distinct feel. Like the Room for Squares, John Mayer was a very like suburban white kid. You know, I want to run through the halls of my high school. I just left yeah. Berkeley and let right. me make an album. Yeah. yeah, like oh, I'm just in college now. I'm just being one of the guys, yeah. whatever. And then you know he there's like a definite city kind of like the yep. uh, continuum and uh, fuck. fuck battle studies. That's I when I was. stopped. I, continuum was the last album that I got. And then there's the one where he's like sta- the album covers him standing in a field. That's when he's like living in Montana, and that's got a very different feel to it too. There's yeah. almost kind of a country thing going on there. See, I, I was gonna say folksy, not country, like a folksy. Well, I mean, like folksy in the sense that you get. Or instruments that are usually in country music, right? But it doesn't like sound a steel like guitar and like the yeah. harpsichord and shit like that. But really, he recorded it in Brooklyn in, in like Dumbo. Yeah, maybe in I don't cafe know. under the bridge because he's a fucking hipster. Anywho, you can find oh the anthem on iTunes, where you buy your Taylor Swift album. You can also get the oh the anthem podcast. So why right. not get both at the same time? Yeah, and Stitcher and uh, Dog Dogcatcher. And uh, if you want more just general O the Anthem goodness, uh, O the Anthem dot com, Facebook dot com slash O the Anthem, O the Anthem on Twitter, Google Plus, YouTube, uh, fill the hole that fill the void that's left in your heart from the aerobics video not being on there anymore and watch hours and hours of O the Anthem podcast on YouTube. We which we now realize we have hours and hours and hours. Oh, yeah. Like 31 episodes, at yeah. least an hour generally, so... Some of them way more. Some of them way more, some of them less, some of them way more. This is going to be a tough one to turn into a spotlight. Yeah, probably. Last week was really... That, that was just jam-loaded. Yeah. I hope and, you guys enjoyed the bonus one. Yeah, I, and I mean, we split it between business and pleasure, really. <laughs> it was it was on topic, and then us bullshitting. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, I try to do that, but uh, you can find me online uh, anywhere at Robert and Cheek. Uh, directing three different places at Robert and Cheek on all your social networks, uh, a dead drop on all your social networks, also at deaddrop.com, and the movement insurrection.com, and the movement insurrection on all your social networks. Uh, and they're all interconnected. So if you find O the Anthem on Twitter, you can find all of our brands yeah, on we, Twitter. They're all just look through the favorites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, the, all the uh, notifications and stuff. And uh, if you're interested in pre ordering the book, the link will be on the show notes. Yeah. So and Amazon.com, you can just search for it if you if you don't go to those show notes. So um, yeah, but you want to go to the show notes because then I know you're listening. Is. Yeah, right. that's so is. please and make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube page. Yeah, All right. And what's it? What's the listener line? Four four three two one nine seven five nine five. Four four three. Two one nine seven five nine five. Yeah, I want I want all the all the voices of Swifties rising up against us. Oh yeah, please. <laughs> Not that we're gonna actually listen to you because you guys aren't real people. But okay, we're gonna we're gonna have Elijah Cummings. I mean Clay Davis and <laughs> Taylor Swift fans outside of the Oh the Anthem Studios deep below the earth in Parkville, Maryland. Right. Uh, just ready to rise up against us right. like some sort so, of fucking shadow government. And, well, how about we just do that to the real government? That's all. Anyway, uh, <laughs> as always, you've been listening to the audio. Views and opinions of Robert and Cheek are his and his alone. Absolutely. See, put disclaimer here. Yeah. Uh, as always, you've been listening to the So that's it for episode 31. If you want to see last week's full episode, video up top here. And if you want to see my short film, I can't do it. I can't live without you right here. Remember to share, subscribe, like, all of that stuff because we appreciate every little bit of it. And we'll see you next week for the Odi Anthem podcast.